Autoimmune disease just means that the body's attacking itself. So in a war, it'd be like the Americans are shooting down or bombing and they actually hit some of their own soldiers. So most people don't even realize too that cancer, like when somebody gets cancer, basically the person's immune system isn't recognizing it as cancer. So even cancer, you know, like why doesn't the immune system just fight it? Well, it, it's because likely the cancer emulated from a stem cell and then that the, the body's not recognizing that, that specific stem cell genetics as foreign. So that's why you need you know, various treatments to try to kill the cancer because your body's not recognizing it as something that's bad for it. So when somebody has rheumatoid arthritis, well, the rheumatoid factor is an autoimmune antibody. And then systemic lupus, which again is another SLE, is another autoimmune disease, the body makes anti-nuclear antibody. And I've seen in my career all kinds of autoimmune diseases, even autoimmune diseases of the brain, where the brain starts, it has antibodies against myelin. Early in my career, one of the first cases I saw was, this is when like the breast implants were leaking, like back in the 90s, and the person had silicone antibodies in their body, and that was causing all kinds of autoimmune diseases. So there's lots of different causes of autoimmune diseases, and most people don't realize that somebody could even have a structural cause of autoimmune disease, which we'll talk about. So basically, there's over 100 different kinds of autoimmune diseases. Sjogren's disease, Bichette's disease, celiac disease, even type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. Interestingly, that disease has been shown to be partially, or it can be caused by if a baby gets introduced to cow's milk too soon, right? Because let's be honest, like a baby animal is supposed to have mother's milk. So mother's milk in humans is the mother, it's not cow's milk. So it's just interesting. Most people in holistic medicine would say most autoimmune diseases are in part related to the food somebody eats. So think about that statement. One of the ways somebody can tell if there's an autoimmune component, if there's a dietary component to their autoimmune disease is you can fast. So say somebody has an elevated blood test, like they have a high ANA level or rheumatoid factor or the C-reactive protein is high, so these are blood markers for autoimmune disease, and you did a juice fast for a week, or you eliminated certain foods for a certain period of time, then after a week or six weeks or however long you wanted to eliminate a certain food, you then get the blood test again. So back in the day, I would have somebody, they'd have a high sed rate or C-reactive protein, their ANA level, let's say it's one in 1,280, then I'd have them do a juice fast for a week and then just recheck it. So if the ANA level went from 1,280 to negative or down to, uh, 320, then you know there's a food component. Then it's like, well, why is there a food component? Well, it's probably because they have leaky gut. So the way to heal leaky gut, there's lots of nutritional supplements that do it. And then of course, the way we do it is by strengthening somebody's vagus nerve. This is just a summary of how autoimmune diseases could occur. So if somebody has a destructive lifestyle, by that, I just mean that they don't eat very, very healthy. They have toxic relationships. They don't like themselves. Uh, so I could tell you some stories. Like I had this lady who had a uh, autoimmune disease and I asked her, I said, Margaret, do you have any thoughts about yourself that aren't good? And immediately she's like, Oh my God, you know, Jose, I, 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 I was with him for four years, then he just up and left and she was crying. He just up and left. 
and went back to Mexico without even letting her know, and the autoimmune disease occurred after that. Then one time I had five Amish people in my office, and this was in Chicagoland, three of them had autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, so three out of the five in one day. So one of the ladies uh, that had rheumatoid arthritis I said to her, did one of your kids leave the Amish? And right away, she's like, how'd you know? And I said, how often do you think of that? And she was just thinking about it all the time. So then I, anyway, we just had a discussion about that and how that, how that negative thinking all the time can give an autoimmune disease. And I'm not saying all negative thinking causes autoimmune disease, but if you are fine, and something tragic happens and all you do is think about it all the time and you have self-destructive thinking, well, obviously the body is going to follow your thinking, right? So if you're stressed all the time, it's, something's going to happen and it's not going to be good for the body. So one of the guys was Wilhelm, and I'm like, Wilhelm, you look terrible. And he was some, one of my old patients, and I said, what's going on? And he's like, oh, I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, da, da, da. And I said, when did that happen? And he told me the date. And I said, did anything happen the year before or the year of that you got that? And he said, yes. And I go, what? I lost my business. Then I went into business with my, fa with my brother and the business was doing terrible. And I go, how often do you think about the business doing terrible? And he goes, all the time. I go, Wilhelm. Like somebody can't have thoughts that are continually negative and negative things not happen to the body. So the first thing, if somebody has an autoimmune disease, just make sure that you like yourself, that you feel worthy, that you work, you're, if you're melancholy becoming, like I'm, I always say I'm a recovered melancholy. Like I'm much, like people think, oh, you're so outgoing and you're so positive. Yeah, I worked really hard at it. My innate nature is to be introverted and negative. So I have went from being introverted and negative to just trying to be all that God would have me to be, which is to be an encourager, to be helpful, to feel love and joy, and not be obsessive compulsive about the one patient that's not doing good, or the one negative thing when there's 20 amazing things that are happening, because I used to perseverate on the one bad thing. And it's just a very terrible way to live, because you end up believing lies, like I'm not a good doctor. What? You know, like in other words, I might have 19 patients doing great, one's not doing good, do you think it's right that I just perseverate on how bad of a doctor I am if one patient out of 20 is not doing good? You know, it's just not, so we start believing lies and everything, and then we get in bondage to the lies, and ultimately it's going to hurt our body. Like your body is going to follow what you're thinking. It's also going to follow what you're saying. Like the Bible says, life and death is in the tongue. So your words should be a blessing, like your words should be life-giving, my words should be life-giving. So we all should be very, very hesitant to criticize somebody, and even the criticism, it needs to be with love. So almost all of our words should be positive. So if you're somebody who, uh, you know, whether it's your kids screaming at your kids, it's uh, your spouse, your significant other, your parents, like, it's just not good because ultimately it's hurting yourself. And then when somebody has ligamentous cervical destruction, meaning they just have, because of a face down forward lifestyle, they have ligament injury in their neck, causes a breakdown in their neck curve. Breakdown in the neck curve is called cervical destruction. That can injure the vagus nerve, block the jugular vein so the brain can get injured. And then the nerve supply to the inner organs isn't normal. So you get brain and body disease. And this basically shows like how you can have a structural issue lead to injuries to the body and brain. And also somebody who's eating poorly has a poor lifestyle, they're out of shape, they don't move, they sit in front of the TV, they eat a lot of pretzels, and trust me, I love pretzels, but it's not one of the four food groups you know, so try to eat real food, fruits, vegetables, protein sources, make sure you eat enough protein. If you have an autoimmune disease, 
make sure that your neck structure is good because it's through the vagus nerve that inflammation is resolved in the human body. So when your vagus nerve is healthy, your body has a much greater ability to resolve inflammation. And make sure the things that are polluting the body, bad thinking, toxic relationships, energy suckers, like those things, you're doing your best to get rid of them. And I just got a slide or two that just shows how vagus nerve dysfunction can cause so many different conditions. And every time you sense you have stress, the vagus nerve has to be stimulated. So in other words, the way to give the vagus nerve rest or help the vagus nerve repair is not be thinking about stressful things, not thinking about complaining, not thinking about things that make you bitter or upset. So that would mean that we all gotta be careful what we watch on our cell phone or what we watch on the TV, right? So one of the best ways to feel better is to go on a cell phone TV complaining fast. So like somebody who's really, really sick, if you said, why don't you be outside, uh, either eliminate or stop using your cell phone or, or electronics and make sure that every word out of your mouth, every, all the music you hear, all the conversations you have, be, have them be positive for one week and just see what happens. And if you wonder if there is a food component, go on a juice fast or just, just be very pristine in eating or even just fast for a few days and just see if you don't feel better. And normally you feel much, much better. So that, those are just ways to figure out whether your lifestyle would have an effect on helping you. And then if you have clicking, popping, grinding in your neck or neck pain, you likely have a structural neck issue. So the way to improve that is to work on proper posture, have your computer up, have prism glasses, monitor your vagal function by an Apple Watch or some other device that measures heart rate variability. So heart rate variability tells you moment to moment whether you're in a state of peacefulness or rest or you're under stress. So when the heart rate variability is high, that means the vagus nerve is healthy and your autonomic nervous system is in balance. When the heart rate variability is low, that means that you're, you're feeling stress for some reason. And there's chemical stress, then there's structural stress. So the structural stress is when there's instability in the neck, so the muscles tighten to limit the destructive motion. So the way to resolve that is to get a better neck curve and to get prolotherapy to tighten the ligaments. And then this just shows how the person has upper cervical instability and that upper cervical instability starts limiting the vagal nerve stimulation or input to the various organs so then the organs start not functioning well. If you find that your heart rate is higher than normal, that's a sign that you're vagus nerve isn't functioning normally and that you should do something to improve your neck curve. This just shows how ligament injury can affect the nerves in the neck, especially the autonomic nerves such as the vagus nerve. So if your neck curve changes in a negative way, like in other words, it gets reversed, it'll start hampering the functioning of your vagus nerve. So this is me, that's what my office looks like. So you try to have your, you try to be in this position, that's a kneeling rocker bottom chair, so make sure that your computer setup is high. And then of course have a pro Vegas lifestyle, make sure you're on positive people that encourage you and that you're encouraging others and you're doing a lot of laughing and things that you enjoy.